Hi, uh, welcome to Porch Time with Bill Benson. Uh, by now, I'm hoping that most of you know that I'm Bill Benson, and uh, um, I have a lot of fun on the porch. I have musicians and singer-songwriters and, and people that I've known for years and some that I'd like to get to know better. And to this episode, I have a lovely singer-songwriter, Julia Davis. Julia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, so uh, first thing I, I noticed was your awesome guitar. Uh, the hole up here, I've you. never seen that yes. before. So that's pretty cool. It's my breed love. I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, now you are from Simsbury, mm -hmm. and you are a singer-songwriter, and you've written a, a, a million songs. <laughs> no, uh, probably I'd say about fifteen to twenty now. 15 to 20. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. When was your uh, When was your first song that you wrote? Um, so actually, the first song I ever wrote was when I was twelve years old, and it was a song called "Drift Away," and. Um, I really loved it. My mom was so obsessed with it, and so mm -hmm. we actually got it recorded, and I yeah. still have it today. But oh. um, I got back into songwriting around January this past year, and the first song that I wrote was Straight Laced Girl, and so I'll be playing that one for you guys today. Excellent, but, excellent. Yeah. So what made you decide to uh, write songs? Honestly, I was just sitting in my um, dorm room, and I write songs almost like journaling, so mm -hmm. I... Uh, in high school, all throughout high school, I didn't really have like a, a typical party experience, I guess mm -hmm. you'd say. I didn't really go out a lot. So going to college obviously changed a little bit because, yeah. you know, that's the college way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. when I got back to school, I was kind of reflecting on all of that and the friends I had and kind of the things that I had done that I said in high school I would never do or something like mm -hmm. that. And so I wrote this this song about kind of the girl that I used to be and just you know, not necessarily a loss of innocence, but in a way, a loss of innocence. Yeah, you get to a certain point in your life where, um, you know, they, things happen, you know, and mm -hmm. you, you're not the little, you know, the, the little yeah. innocent girl or boy any longer. You you get exposed to life and, and, uh, and all of its temptations and, and everything. So why don't you play a song? Okay, awesome. So this one's Straight Laced Girl. Mm -hmm.
Nice. Thank you. Nice. So, um, this is your show. Okay. <laughs> now, but I have to just say this because listening to you sing, um, it sounds like you have had voice lessons. Well, a little bit. A I little mean, bit? Yeah. So but over, the reason okay. I say that is because okay. I, I hear, I heard this, this um, range that you had, which basically started here and then went up and, and so on. So I heard like you've it's either natural or you've been trained. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, my musical kind of path, I guess, or journey started um, in elementary school. I actually um, was heavily involved in choir all mm -hmm. throughout elementary school and into middle school. And I went to a few national choirs down in Washington. and um, It was fun, but I got very burnt out on it. So I quit in high school, and I kind of wanted nothing to do with music. I steered clear of it for about three years. And then when I went to college, I tried out for an acapella group. And I didn't think I was going to get in, because the acapella scene's pretty competitive. But yeah. Um, yeah. I got in. and. What has really shaped, I think, and changed my voice over the past year specifically has been six hours of training nice. every single week and, nice. and um, rehearsals. So in addition to that, you know, I've, I, my mom has been a huge influence mm -hmm. on my voice and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I've, you know, the cobbler's son has no shoes in a way, so I've never really had, like, yeah. official lessons. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you're around music, if you're around things, uh, you know, certainly a cappella to me is... Uh, one of the, the you know, it's a huge challenge because mm -hmm. there's no, there's no instrument to hide behind. To yeah, hide behind. exactly. And there's, there's, and there may be four or five part, um, you know, acapella or twenty part, um, and everybody has their piece and part, and mm -hmm. and it flows and ebbs and, and so on. So it's, uh, I can see that you've yeah. you've had that, and well, thank you. and I can also you know um, being the old uh, guy that I am, I've seen a lot of young. Uh, singers uh, struggling to imitate or to find their voice mm -hmm. and so you get caught into one place yeah um, but it's great that I can see you're, you and, and that song specifically just you know kind of flow with that song thank you so much I really appreciate that so uh, play another song because I okay. want to hear as much as I can definitely so this next song um, is called Your Eyes and I actually wrote it when I was a junior in high school um, over the summer one summer I just decided that I wanted to write a song so mm -hmm. um, I there's this couple in my high school where there was um, and I used to idolize them they were just the cutest thing ever and I didn't have a boyfriend in high school, so I had no inspiration to write a love song, but mm -hmm. I looked to them and wrote this song out of her eyes and her perspective. So, oh, nice. yeah.
very sweet love song. <laughs> Thank you. It's one of my few happy ones. Not, but <laughs> ah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, so do you have a uh, an most influential uh, music genre or artist that you, you can go right to and say, yep, this person, I admire this person or this group or whatever? Um, so I kind of grew, like grew up listening to Sheryl Crow and Amy Mann, mm -hmm. um, and to this day when I'm writing a song, I think like, what would Amy Mann say? Because <laughs> her lyrics, while jaded, are very clever, mm -hmm. and um, I I'm, I love all of her songs. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I think as my writing has gotten a little more mature, um, it's grown into my its own thing. But definitely earlier on, I, I was influenced by Taylor Swift and right. and other pop artists right. like her. But um, yeah, I'd say you know like Joni Mitchell, the Eagles, the Beatles. I don't know, yeah. great great classic yeah, yeah. artists I've yeah. really gotten into more recently. And um, I kind of pull from a lot of different genres mm -hmm. to get influence, and I think that that's kind of what makes it cool. Yeah, I think that. Uh the, the music that you that you mentioned is music that um, is timeless and mm -hmm. you know I again it sounds really aged but I do, I don't believe there's any current popular music that's being written today mm -hmm. that rivals anything from that I agree. time. Yeah. So if you you know and for me uh, it's great uh, to hear a young person speak of it and also sing them you know, mm -hmm. because it's uh, um, it, it means that everybody's listening you know, yeah, exactly. and, and listening still so yeah I agree um, so for anybody in the audience um, watching on television or <laughs> online um, where can people find out more about you and Julia yeah, so basically, um, I'm current, I currently have a Facebook page and an Instagram. You can find me at Julia Davis Music on Instagram and just Julia Davis uh, Music on Facebook as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just promoting some uh, local gigs around Connecticut um, and Rhode Island and basically New England. So. Um, I'm hoping to do a little bit of a, a mini tour next summer and have some uh, some more shows. Um, so definitely check out my Facebook and Instagram to know where I'll be performing and to hear some of my new music that'll hopefully be released next summer as well. So, nice. Yeah. So next summer when you go on tour, could I open a show for you maybe? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we can play one together. All right. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Um, so... Um, you said that was the last song was one of your few happy ones. It was, yeah. Is there, um, is there, is is a really depressing a one? Depressing, really sad song. <laughs> um, Not that you want to make people depressed, but I, you know, I was talking to someone uh, about sad songs and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, sad songs, you know, make people happy to, yeah. or to hear anyway that you're not going through the same. That you're not alone in going through you know, certain things. Exactly. In life. I actually do have one um, pretty sad song that I wrote. Um, it's called Point of Return. Uh, and basically, I. So I have a tendency when I write because I don't know. I think that writing is storytelling and stories can sometimes be fictional. Mm -hmm. So yeah. sometimes my songs turn into a completely fictional thing that I've taken inspiration from from a very small moment in time. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I went off to school and I met this boy and, you know, things didn't work out exactly how I wanted them to. Um, so I was just feeling a little rejected and mm -hmm. upset and um, I took that small emotion and I wrote a complete breakup song about it and it's called <laughs> Point of Return. So, yeah. yeah. But anyway, it's, it's one of my sadder ones. Yeah. Trust me, we've all been through it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've yet to go through the real thing. I can only imagine what type of song I'm going to get with it when somebody actually breaks my heart.
So, uh, how old is that song? I wrote that song back in March, so it's a few months okay. now. <laughs> now, um, what would you, I mean, and we talked about Facebook, Instagram, what would you like people to know about you as a songwriter, performer, that would encourage them to come to follow you and come see you, and I know that you you uh, you're you're um, uh, you're doing things uh, some shows with your mom Carrie Johnson, mm -hmm. um, and you got I think this Friday um, yep. coming up is the uh, Northwest North End store. North End store, mm -hmm. but to have you know for everybody out there and to say here's why you need to come and see me play. Well. Um, I don't know. I really pride myself on writing true songs and true lyrics mm -hmm. and uh, just things that I feel like I'm the only one in the world that, that is going through and, and you know, with partying or, or college or new experiences and kind of feeling like you've lost yourself and mm -hmm. trying to regain that sense of yourself. Yeah. And um, for the people I've played my songs for, that's really resonated with mm -hmm. them. And I think that that's kind of where I'm tap what I'm tapping into at, yeah. at this moment, it's just like the younger generation. And I think, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't typically sell myself, but I like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a relaxed vibe and yeah. I just like to play music yeah. and sing songs. So. Well, I think the main thing is that, um, you know, if you love what you're doing, um, in whatever piece of life you have, um, it comes across in the music, and I can tell you that uh, it does come across sitting here on my porch. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are, it's crazy how fast this show goes by, like but we are, <laughs> yes, we are running out of time, so I want to thank you for coming to the porch. Thank you so much for having me, I really and, appreciate it. Um, play one more song, we'll kind of play, you know, roll off into the sunset. All right, sounds good. Right. So this one's a song I wrote called Wild Child. Reckless 
and free of care her heart lays out Unnatural red head but she dyes it blonde Born in the hands of sin she tries it on But it's harder than to live.